some humidity even in winter. And we were commissioned to do that project six, seven years ago, and that looks extremely normal. Because uh, this is really the, 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 the no, most normal Japanese office. The only unnormal thing about that is that you can open the, win the windows completely. And this pro is providing 50% natural ventilation during the year. And you can open that window to the inside. What you can't see in that picture is that there is another glass shield in front of it. <laughs> you won't fall out, OK? <laughs> it's nearly not visible, but there's an interesting detail about that. You can open that quite widely, also for cleaning and for ventilation. At the same time, if it is stormy weather and not so, not, not so nice, you can open this one. Because this is a perforated sheet of, um, sheet of metal. And with that handle, you can as well open this very, very small thing. So if you are shy, if you're not, if you're afraid about have, um, opening the whole thing, you can do it also with just opening that, that small louvre, or however you would call that. Um, it provides more than 50% natural ventilation during the year. Um, it has got a, an award from the uh, uh, Council of Tall Buildings. Um, and as well, it um, has got a Caspi S class rating, which is the highest rating you can get in Japan for this kind of building. Um, we won, let's say, I think two and a half years ago, uh, a competition for a big university in Ireland, the, uh, actually the biggest Irish university, University College of Dublin. Um, it is quite near to the bay interesting climate, mild and windy at the same time. Um, they have their campus, a donate was originally in the 70s, a donation from some rich families around, and they donated the land, which is meanwhile a very, very valuable piece of land. And um, so they decided to build a new campus there, including some of the old buildings from the 70s or 60s. And as always, they say they want, they are going for a campus. The problem is they don't have really a campus because it's all, I mean, buildings spread around. And what we wanted to look for is a real campus, which is a field in the middle where everybody is oriented to. You can identify with and things like that. So this idea of that, of that eight-like design, or this double, double eye, is to put that all in one order. And, and provide a kind of general idea for all the buildings around. And the buildings we are doing is this one in front of the, um, uh, in front of the campus to the end 11, to the motorway, and as well this one and the landscape design to make sure that that all puts, is, is, is put together in a, in, in a, in a certain way. Um, this is a gate, the entrance to the university, as well as to some other facilities. That's a, a partnership project together with a private developer. So they put a hotel in, uh, student residences, uh, uh, like uh, shopping as well, um, offices, laboratories, everything. 50% will be roughly occupied by the university, 50% will be additional commercial. And that kind of mixture is quite attractive for them because you earn a lot of money with that, yes, they need it for the university. And the other aspect is that kind of vitalization and the mixture between residential, commercial, university, brings them a little bit back into public attention, not just being a, a, a how do you call it, hided university. Yeah. This is the gate itself. It's all about that roof design. The roof protects it from some aggressive winds, and at the same time, it provides some energy resource, because um, we are putting photovoltaic and solar purely uh, carbon-free, and and many of these issues. So what, what we did is, we used the whole roof as a photovoltaic power station. Uh, we get more electrical, electrical power out of that, because it's huge, uh, than we use for the building, main time of the year. And then we get lake water uh, from the Zurich Lake, and that is a quite interesting resource. Um, there is a suction pipe and a return pipe with cold water coming out and relatively warmer water getting in. And this is what they did from the building. They, they piled it nearly slightly horizontal, slightly sloping, into the lake, like, like 150 meters. Um, we didn't, we were not allowed to dig, to, to, to dig that from, from the surface. We had to dig it through, through a hole into 
um, into the underground. Uh, 70 meters from the shore, um, it ended, or it ends in, in, in the lake. We get um, the main energy for heating and cooling out of that. Um, this is a facade. It's a double skin facade again. Double course. We wanted to protect the sun shading in between, like always. There's no noise pro problem here. But what we get out of the double skin is an openable window. But this window is not a real window, so that is the special thing about that. This is just uh, in front of um, the slab. And we're just using that because we wanted to provide the full transparency. No windows, no profiles, no nothing. And then we said, OK, we do that kind of transparent glass, and a triple glazing in, in the back, and the single glazing in front of it, in between, in the cavity, the sun shading. This is a double skin. as a sun shading. The, the same time that sun shading is the glare protection, the trick is because the sun shading can be in place, in function, with any wind condition, because it's protected. It can be the same time the glare protection system. And because it is a horizontal louvre, it provides a much more transparent view outside than a normal glare protection system like a screen would, would, would do. And I hate that covering uh, internal spaces by, by glare protection systems, because I think you, you, you cut the view completely, nearly. I saw that in Australia, where they have the most beautiful uh, view in the world, to Bondi Beach or wherever, or to the bay, and they cut it by just putting down the, 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 the solar or the, the glare um, protection system. I think that is much better, providing a space, a cavity, putting that in, protecting it against the wind, and then make sure that it works as sun shading and as glare shading. Again, activated masses. And then we have a ventilation through that, through that element in front of the slab. This is, again, the part of the building where we take back the air. Kind of, we, we call that a box, which is just representing that curved design. Just uh, one to two meter, and that's it. The other surface of our buildings are never covered by suspended ceilings or things like that. Of course, if you have activated masses, you, you are not allowed, it's not possible to cover it by suspended ceilings because you get away with the effect then. This is uh, the opening to the outside, so it's uh, possible to, uh, to maintain the facade from there. This is again a mock-up, testing that all. Um, the mock-up shows quite good this point here. You will see that in a minute in, in detail. Um, this is a detail, a perforated metal where the air gets in. And then we have a grill on the floor and as, as, as well one on the top, on the, on the, on the ceiling, and saying, I don't care. Um, and the, the elliptical one is better, but not good enough. And then we turn that. Into, into the view. So the bigger, the wider side of the elliptical form is then turned into, into the view. And then we position the cores so they block out the view to the direct neighbors, which are the same height, like 150 to 200 meters, just, just a few meters away. So you have to block them. And the same is the, f and, uh, uh, is the case here and here. So what you see here is that, for example, this view, which is to Bondi, which is the most beautiful and most prestigious view beside the harbor view, um, is open between these very, very narrow buildings. And we had to make sure that the cores are not ex exactly positioned where the view is, and the view is where no other building is, and so on. So we made sure that they can sell the view. And the second decision we did for that is we were allowed to build 250 meters. The problem was that the required floor space, the, 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 the size of the floor space, was, was not getting us to that height. Because if you, if you have 1,500 square meter uh, uh, rentable space, and you add the square meters you had, it gets just to 150 50 meters. We get for design excellency 10% extra from the city of, of um, uh, Sydney. And we get another 10% by providing natural ventilated space in the back of the building. I will show that later. So 20% is coming out of that kind of design, really. Um, and what we did is we raised again the ground, fl the, the first floor, 20 meters up, 
so that even the one on the first floor has a free view to the harbor.